Hello YouTube, nightly installment of the Hypertrophy series today. We're going to bounce back from a topic that I've already introduced, baseline. And now we're going to try and discuss it within the context of a schedule. So the context of a program. So baseline can be thought about as a recovery tool because it's going to be completely in contact with the frequency in between sessions. And it can also be understood as something that you're going to use to regulate intensity within sessions because it's going to be something that happens in between the sets. So your ability to basically either recover as you train to go back and do the weight again for a set amount of reps or the ability of the body to recover completely from the damage so that the performance when you come in next session is back you can accumulate more tonnage and you can progress in strength over time. Those two valuables are both important, but they're both cover, going to cover different aspects of the training and different qualities that you're going to try and promote to keep building muscle. So this video is going to serve as an introduction, but more of an advanced one, than, because we're not going to recap what baseline is. Instead, I want to present these two different topics by discussing what they both have in common. And what they both have in common is the entire importance of the, the very concept of baseline. Why do we care so much about it? Why do we care so much about our ability to get fresh again when we train and do more reps? Why do we care about the ability to recover from heavy workouts and then try again the next time? It's because all of that creates progression in two ways. One, it stabilizes tonnage because if you have the ability to control exactly how much time you need to wait to be able to replicate the effort you just did, then you know for a fact that tonnage is never going to dip. And as far as volume and intensity manipulation goes, it's something that is essential because the more your program is going to get complex, the more rep ranges you're going to have to deal with, the more you're going to have to rely on the ability of your mind to understand when the body is doing its job, job and when it's not. You could also do, do all of that with a calculus, but the issue is that those same calculus are applied to a session that is either going to happen in the future, happening now, or happened in the past. Without concrete experience in the gym training, those calculus are worthless. This is also why I always tell you, if you program something before running with it and just putting that in stone and saying, okay, I'm going to stick to that for eight months, try it out. You have to think about it as if you are creating a software. You're creating a software and you're going to have an alpha test or you're going to try and uh, pinpoint the massive mistakes that are easily targetable and removable. And then after that, you do a beta test. And usually the beta test is open to the public and the reason why it's open to the public is because that way people are going to play and play and play they're going to use your software a ton and they're going to find little kinks little issues that you might not have been able to find in your alpha uh, phase but they're going to figure it out because they're going to use the product as it's intended that's what you're going to do with your program you're going with your own experience and uh, and just intelligence as a programmer to be able to find out from a theoretical perspective the issues with the program because you are going to know a lot about volume and intensity but then once that is done you need to have a, a, a period of time where you're going to test it in the gym and i advise you to do two to four weeks where you're going to have at least run the the program for two or three cycles and that is going to show you exactly what is just not gonna work you don't need more time than that because what is going to be basically very evident is baseline. Baseline is going to tell you, okay, your calculus for volume intensity was wrong. And this is going to happen within the session and between the session. So that is the importance of baseline within programming. It's a gouging tool. It is something that is going to also tell you when to progress. Something that people don't realize is if you're able to replicate an effort, for example, for four reps and you get the same amount of uh, reps each time for four sets. That is a sign that you're using a weight that is not challenging enough. 
all right? And what is telling you this? Well, it's the fact that the muscle is able to replicate the exercise with the same amount of reps every single time. That is not normal. That is baseline, telling you that your programming or your weight selection is not good. On the other side of the spectrum, if you get eight reps on the first set and then it dips down to five, this is a loss of reps that is quite high for a rep range so high. So something is wrong here. And what is telling you this is baseline, you are not able to replicate the muscular, uh, uh, the muscular exercise several times. It's not normal. And that's for reps. The complexity of this is also that, and we're going to talk about this when I make a, an episode just about baseline within the session, but when exercises follow each other, you also understand that your ability to recover uh, is going to be impacted. And that can be an issue for people who don't really have a program, for people who rotate exercises too much, because let's say exercise number three on the list for the day is something with four sets. Well, if you base your understanding on the recovery aspect of the baseline off of that variable, and then you come in another day and suddenly that exercise is ranked one, so you start with it, you're the freshest, it's what I would call strength work, your ability to recover from that is going to be completely different. So you need to have that in mind as you program. Again, that's utilizing the principles of going back to baseline as a projection of the ability of the body to keep uh, producing strength and power as you train. And the beauty of this is that when you cannot do that anymore, if you've, you, you have your intensity calculated down to a T and you know that you're not supposed to dip down underneath a certain level, it's going to allow you to say, okay, after this amount of work, this muscle group is done its ability to produce strength that is relevant to the hypertrophy I want to create doesn't exist. This is when I stop the session. This is going to allow you to do a uh, squanching, a reducing of the session so that it's quality, it's as tight as possible, and it's quick. We want to put in the work that is quality and quick. That way we can actually produce a workout that is effective. That's the way to think about this. And then in between sessions, the same principles apply. You're going to find that if you are doing a knee flexion and then three days afterwards you redo a knee flexion and you're not able to replicate the same effort with the same weight and your tonnage dips, one of two things just happen. Either you shouldn't be doing strength work here because your body just told you that it doesn't have the ability to do that, it's not recovered for strength yet, or Maybe this could be swapped for variation with less weight, still a deflection, but it's going to be something that is going to be in a different rep range. It's not going to be the same intensity window. And that also has to be taken into consideration when you calculate the baseline. When you do a program, depending on the split, of course, some splits are going to be better for that than others. You need to keep in mind that a muscle that is worked on day A if it's worked again on day B or on day C, on day, on day D, it needs, to be, uh, it needs to be ran. You need to try it out. You need to see how much you can recover. Some people will want to be fully recovered to work the muscle again. Some people will want to be still a bit tired or they'll want to over recover. All of these are valid if you can explain why you're doing that and you can justify it in terms of volume and intensity and tonnage accumulation. And of course, depending on who you are, this can be completely different from individual to individual. I personally can do hip hinges and heavy deadlifts fairly frequently, it's not an issue. But heavy squats, heavy knee flexions shoot my recovery abilities. So I need to think about that when I program. And what is telling me this? Baseline again. Because recovery is directly called with baseline, that's what we call baseline. And baseline is what I would call the positive pendant of injuries, which are the negative pendants. They both give you indications that you did something wrong. The good thing with the baseline is that it's muscular based. It's your muscles telling you something. Injuries is your tendons, it's just the structure, it's the, the bone, or it's the muscle belly that is also telling you something, but 
it's telling it's giving you information that will be applicable in the future because it taught you a lesson but it's not as kind of an advice as the baseline and the baseline is something that because it happens every single time you train it's a constant flow of information that you should be paying very close attention to because it's it's basically what hypertrophy is it's tiring up the muscle as much as you can without getting injured letting it recover enough to promote progression in the in the long term and then as soon as you can working it again that of course only goes for muscles that you want to grow that's another implication of the baseline if it is a muscle you don't want to grow even but that's super rare a muscle that you actually want to shrink you still have to apply the principles of the baseline to understand how much you're supposed to push that muscle how fast it recovers and how much tonnage it will accumulate as you do it so that is the number two video on baseline and i think that we're going to do an extra two one where i'm going to talk specifically about all of the implications of the baseline within the session and the implication of the baseline on a weekly basis we're going to base that on a block a programming block of a week so any questions you might have about the topic let me know in the comments i'm always happy to answer and as always thank you for watching the hypertrophy series i will catch you next time